Well, today, at open day, as you say, it's the uh, 1st of February. Weather could have been kinder. River height here at uh, Blair Drummond's about uh, four and a half on the gauge there, so a wee bit high. Not too bad colour-wise, uh, but fish very scarce, I have to say. Never seen a thing moving all day. So we're spinning rather than fly fishing, just because of the heights. Well, I'm here and I've just met up with my good friend, Mr. Tom Monaghan, who has been, for the last few months, uh, discussing with various bodies and anglers themselves about the, the Well Fisheries Review and the proposals by the Scottish Government to change things um, throughout Scotland. And we've been chewing the fat and the bothy there as to what the implications of that's going to be, Tom. And I think you've got a lot of concerns, uh, far-reaching concerns, on how this is going to affect anglers and their clubs. Absolutely, David. There's a lot of serious concerns um, throughout Scotland. and We absolutely discredited the science that was used to categorise the rivers. Um, we looked at the, the science that, that was used for to categorise uh, the River Erne, for example. And myself and David Summer spent a lot of time and been interviewed on television and so on and so forth uh, about the anomalies of this. Mm -hmm. And basically what Marine Scotland have done is over the past, they've set a conservation limit which was very difficult to achieve anyway because it was based on North S figures but they set a conservation limit which was based entirely on the, the previous five years catch results. Mm -hmm. Now Marine Scotland themselves say that um, the data is not good, it's not usable unless it's at least 20 years data, rolling data. So what they've done is they've contradicted themselves, they've contradicted the, their own standards and they said, look, we are going to categorise these rivers in the last five years. Well, the Erne was never going to reach any conservation level over the last five years because two of the years are drought years. Yeah. There's yeah. a spate river. Yeah. Right? So in September, October, during the peak rod exploitation period, there was no water, yeah. no fish, no anglers. Yeah. So it was never going to reach right, any. So it's, a, it's an unfair so reflection it's unfair, on the results. It's unfair. And these yeah. points were made forcibly, well put by many people yeah. to Marine Scotland and to, and to Dr. Ian McLeod, the Minister, to various MSPs, so on and so forth. And we thought that they would at least listen. Yeah. The result is they didn't listen. And, and the Minister has announced that they are going ahead with these proposals. Now, what we also said at that time was that it was going to have far-reaching effects on the membership of um, affordable angling clubs like Creef Angling Club, Comrie Angling Club and so on and so forth. And we weren't scaremongering because it's actually come to fruition. Um, I've had uh, communications from Creef Angling Club Secretary, for example, who says that the country membership is down 30%, 30% which is a loss of £5,000. The local membership is likely to be down at least 30%, another £4,000, which is £10,000 nearly, yep. and it's totally unsustainable yep. for, for, for uh, clubs that break even. Mm -hmm. So, Comrie is in a similar position. Comrie is seriously worried about the threat of folding, and that's another club with 200 odd members. So it's unsustainable what they're doing. So, Tom, and I, I fully appreciate what you're saying there, I, I suppose Scottish Government's looking at stats and looking at the sort of consultation feedback that they got. And I know from various surveys we did in Stirling Council, when you're asking for people's feedback and filling in forms, you sometimes are misled, if you like, on how people feel about things. And I know that in Scottish Government they didn't get a lot of feedback and a lot of returns on the survey forms that were put out there, for one reason or another. And I think a lot of anglers, one, didn't understand it, and they're from a generation that are no really, and, and no being unfair to anybody, they're maybe no computer literate like the younger generation are, and, and as a result of that, they've maybe had an unfair or an, un, an unreasonable and unrealistic feedback that's no given them the full information. Would that be fair? Take your point, absolutely, David. I mean, there's so much apathy amongst people and members of participants of the sport. They think because people like you and I are putting in submissions, then that's good enough. Yeah. They don't need to do it. So, for example, an angling association like Creek with 220 members, there's probably only maybe about 20 members actually put in submissions. Yeah. And it's a microcosm, actually, of the amount of the amount of angling clubs there is. But probably throughout Scotland, probably only 10 or a dozen angling clubs actually put in objections. Aye, aye. 
So they've maybe got they've maybe got a feeling for this. It's it's no actually accurate, and it's maybe a, maybe a wee bit uh, unrealistic, and and yeah. and not completely bringing everybody into the fold as it were. Absolutely. Now we, we discussed earlier on when we're tuning the fact as we do we got a wee bit excitement about opening day, but I, I never knew this in the Well Fisheries Review, but the inshore netting, which you, you tell me that. In some category uh, of rivers, and I believe we're going to talk about the fourth, which is a Cat 3, where we've got this, this uh, we can take the fish at certain times, that they've allowed inshore netting for sea trout. Well, inshore netting continues under Category 3, um, because although legally they're not allowed to kill salmon, they can still net for sea trout. Yeah. Now, they're going to catch salmon as a byproduct. Uh, absolutely. And we just had a chat this morning with Lee Fisher, the, the fourth fisheries head bailiff, who said that it's going to be impossible to police this. Absolutely impossible to police this, because who's going to police the bycatch of a netsman? Exactly. How, how are they going to do it? They don't have the manpower to do it. Yeah. Well, I've, I've been in Lee's position in, in trying to police the nets on the fourth when it was allowed to take salmon yeah. um, by net and cobble. Yeah. And trust me, it's a very difficult thing to police at the best of times, but by bringing in that sort of legislation, for me, it's, that is now impossible to police. But for me also, being a fish, an ex-fishery manager, sea trout's every bit as important to the system as salmon. They're a migratory fish, they're, they're multiple spawning fish, they are an absolute vital component to our river systems. So I, for the life of me, I can't understand why you would allow to take sea trout in any river uh, where you're not taking salmon. No. Is it possible then, do you think, for the, the Scottish Minister, because we know she's got a difficult task and she's getting it for all sides, but is it possible for angling clubs and anglers themselves to make further representation for her, at least they can reconsider the position going forward? Well, the, there's still the opportunity to make uh, to make submissions to the Rural Affairs Committee. Right. How do um, we do that, Tom? Well, I've had uh, communications from Alec Ferguson, uh, MSP, who's the, the, the Conservative Party spokesman in Rural Affairs, and also from Liz Smith, the MSP, yeah. who's really passionately involved in this. And they're going to... They, Alec Ferguson is a member of the, the race committee, so he is going to put up uh, an objection within the race committee, but we've, we've got to keep the submissions up, we've got to keep lobbying MSPs. So is that the message today and to, to our fellow anglers and, and angling clubs up and down the, the country? Keep the Let's get up. involved keep the fight and up. make sure we have a sensible good positive argument going forward so we can sustain this sport. It's Absolutely. a great sport to angle. And I think my best advice to Eileen McLeod is to actually come and speak to the anglers. The yep. real anglers who are involved in, in, in this discussion and uh, not listen to our advisors in Marine Scotland because I think she's listening to the wrong people. That's it's probably fair and, and I think I think she's open minded enough to do that. I would I would I would encourage her to come and see how Nextman operate and if if we can Put that first hand to her and see what the difficulties are, particularly policing, I'm sure she might have an open mind to that. Absolutely. Tom, thanks very much for your viewpoint and everybody, and a good everybody get involved and tight lines. And you. All the best. Mm. Yeah, we're discussing there, just taking on Tom's point about the, the inshore netting um, and allowing the netting for sea trout but not for salmon in certain rivers in Scotland. You know, you've got to look at the, the commercial netting that's around the east coast and how many fish that takes. I mean, if you take Montrose Bay, where there's a big commercial concern there, that, that's not just fish that's running the Tayside rivers, that's a mixed stock fishery, that's taking fish from all over. And that for me, it's a super efficient operation, they're very good at what they do and they've, they've got a living to make and stuff like that, but that is taking a lot of wild fish out of the system. And if you compare that to angling effort, there, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind but that has got more uh, effect on our stocks than ever an angler will have. Certainly in, in these days when salmon anglers are declining quite rapidly. Um, so for me, if you were going to look at inshore netting and, and stop it all together, then it has to go hand in hand with the offshore netting as well, particularly operations that are so vast as they are. Now I don't know exactly how Scottish ministers would go about that because there's certain rights there um, that have been passed down from generation to generation and at the end of the day it's a business and any buyout is going to be a lot of money over a period of time but it has to be phased in surely when we're just now farming salmon on the west coast and we've seen the effects of that 
and they've increased that by 50% or in the process of increasing it by 50%, where does it stop? Um, if we want the sport to progress, there's a lot of factors have to go into the mix and for me, listening to Tom, who's been in this game for many, many years, we have to look at this review, we have to encourage people back to the sport, we have to get them enjoying it, but above all, we've got to make it sustainable. And if that means some pain to some commercial interests or inshore fisheries that are netting big time, that's what it means. That's what we've got to do. Or we'll not be standing on rivers like this and enjoying uh, parts of Scotland where this is a fantastic sport.